Hello everyone, welcome to this channel, my name is Ruben and today we are going to talk about the big ideas for Morgenfans from 2021 and this episode will be about part 12, 3D printing. Let's go. So the idea is that 3D printing saves time, cost and waste while creating radically new architectures. And 3D printing is basically a form of additive manufacturing that builds objects layer by layer as opposed to traditional manufacturing where uh, you remove the material from a larger block. And one of the advantages of 3D printing is that it collapses the time between the design and the production and it shifts the power to the designer and reduces supply chain complexity at a fraction of the cost of traditional manufacturing. And Arc believes that 3D printing will revolutionize manufacturing, growing at an annual rate of roughly 60% from 12 billion in 2020 to 120 billion US dollars in 2025. So this really creates an interesting investing opportunity for you. Well, 3D printing revenues declined in 2020, but new users leverage the technology, especially during the pandemic. And they give several examples here, applications during the COVID-19 crisis. You can think about ventilator valves, uh, face shields, respirators, uh, face masks, mask filters, nasopharyngeal swabs, uh, bio models, all that kind of stuff. And on the right, they put nine companies here. So on the x-axis, we have time and on the y-axis, we have uh, the 3D printing sales at public companies, cumulative for nine companies. And the three biggest ones are, uh, the first one is the purple color, that's like Stratasys. And the green color is uh, 3D systems. And the third one is the black color, which is materialized. And the other six companies are like niche companies in their area. So the first use case for 3D printing that I want to show you is about spare parts. The company's co-founder and CEO is Lou Rassi. Fast Radius is working with logistics company UPS to completely rethink the concept of supply chains. Additive manufacturing will have a profound impact on how global supply chains work. Uh, we call it uh, the fourth modality of logistics, in fact. Uh, what we mean is that through human history, uh, we have moved parts in three ways, by ground, by air, and by sea. And now we have a fourth mode of transportation, and that is moving parts by the internet at the speed of light. Digital production offers a tremendous freedom to potential clients. A global 3D printing network can provide products more efficiently. Transport routes are shorter, and there are no huge specialized factories. These days, 3D printers can make just about anything, and robots automatically supervise the assembly lines. These machines can print single pieces or entire series of products 24 hours a day. But so far, 3D printing accounts for only a small percentage of global manufacturing sales, which now total about $12 trillion. Revenues for the 3D printing industry in 2017 were only about $7 billion. But over the next 10 years, sales are expected to reach $100 billion. A lot of spare parts are now made by 3D printers. Companies can simply scan and store the components instead of keeping them for years in warehouses. And they can print new parts whenever they need them. How many data points do we get for this part? From each scan, it's in the millions of points that we're gathering. Um, and, and now for a part like this, millions of points is, is a little redundant. So what happens is the computer itself notices redundancies, points where it can simplify, and then throws away hundreds of thousands of points. The scans are stored in a digital facility and can be printed at any time. The companies save money because they don't have to keep lots of products in big warehouses. And their machines last longer because spare parts are always available. One of our clients is an aerospace client. They had a need for a critical tool for repair. Uh, normally, it would have taken them 48 days to have the tool fabricated in conventional methods. Uh, instead, they ordered a part from our virtual warehouse. Uh, and we made the part, certified the part, and delivered it halfway around the world within 48 hours. It's often faster to print a component part than it is to build it from scratch. In future, this will likely be done on site. 
this situation threatens to transform the way that logistics companies like UPS do business. It would eliminate lengthy transport routes or warehouses for customers' spare parts. That's why UPS has teamed up with Fast Radius to start building a global network of 3D print service providers. It allows goods to be produced in lower quantities, more often, closer to the point of consumption. That's going to radically change the supply chain, and UPS has to be able to change with it. And, the, and so that's why we're investing in this, in this uh, area, because we want to be part of this evolving ecosystem. Many products will no longer be mass produced. They'll be printed individually to meet the specific needs of clients. That will help to eliminate overproduction and long transport routes. 3D production also offers a number of other advantages. If you're producing for an audience of one, so a custom shoe or a custom knee or a custom orthotic, uh, those are not going to be produced in massive factories. It's going to be much more economical to produce those uh, using 3D printing. And so, but all of those materials still need to get to the 3D manufacturer. And instead of, you know, shipping out, you know, thousands of things in bulk, you're going to have thousands of individual shipments. So to a company like UPS, that's very good. 3D printing is still in its infancy. Arc's research indicates that the 3D printing for the end-use parts is the next frontier. We have three uh, types here. First one is prototypes. The second one is the molds and the tools. And the third one is the end-use parts. If we focus on the prototypes, while the market potential is smallest with 12.5 billion, the current penetration is the highest with 40 to 50 percent. And it started in the 1980s. If we move to the molds and the tools in the middle, the market potential is a little bit bigger, 30 billion, and the current penetration is lower, only 4%, and it started in the 1990s. But then we move to the right, the end use parts, that's the biggest market opportunity in the future. The market potential is 490 billion, with only 1% market penetration, and they started in the early 2000s. 3D printing applications vary by industry, volumes, and complexity. We can put these applications by category here on the left, while for prototyping, it crosses across all industries. Molds and tools is really focused on machinery, industrial engineering, die sets, jigs, and industrial molds. And then we have the end use parts that's focused on aerospace, footwear, and plastic products. On the right, we have the 3D printing addressable opportunity, which is 500 billion US dollars. And the three biggest categories are first, aerospace, which is the medium purple color. The dark purple color is the second one, automobiles and auto parts and equipment. And then you have the light purple color, which is machinery. And then all these smaller components are like hobbies, toys and games, die sets, jigs and industrial molds footwear, plastic products, and of course, healthcare. The second use case for 3D printing that I want to show you is about aerospace. It might sound far-fetched, but all the technologies we've seen are converging in pursuit of a civilization on Mars. And NASA's manufacturing wing is revolutionizing how we'll use 3D printing to get there. So this is a laboratory training complex. It's um, pretty much a one-to-one -one, uh, mock-up of the US lab on um, space station right now. This is actually our backup for the first 3D printer uh, that we ever launched in space. Mm -hmm. The space station is an amazing vehicle. We're still somewhat Earth dependent with our space station model. For Mars, we want to be Earth independent. Space does really drive home how important it is to conserve. You know, what are we really going to need for in-space manufacturing to, to make these parts? What you really have to do is have sustainability. This is the refabricator. So it's the first ever integrated 3D printer and recycler all in one. We want to be able to, in one machine, 3D print the part, and then when you're done with it, you just feed it back in, and it creates new filament, and you can make a whole new part. What excites me the most is that closed-loop life cycle. It may seem like a long time before we're going to Mars. It's really not, and we have to work on these technologies today to be ready. 
Is a 3D printer going to help us get to Mars? Absolutely, 1,000%. Back on Earth, a startup in Los Angeles is reimagining how we could rapidly automate the production of orbital rockets. So that's a 3D printer. Yes, this is a Stargate, which we developed and built ourselves. And it's the largest metal 3D printer in the world. Why did you call it Stargate? There's a video game called Starcraft. Uh -huh. And Stargate <laughs> is what you build to warp in spaceships. <laughs> and so we named it after that, because we're warping in spaceships. The thing is massive. Fundamentally, what we're doing is feeding in uh, aluminum wire okay. and then melting it with a very high-power 11-kilowatt laser. So it's like a big soldering arm. Like uh, a, with, like a like... <laughs> yeah, with a laser. Yeah, with a laser. This is the first large part that we made, which was a fuel tank. Normally, getting a tank of this size um, in like aerospace or rocket quality um, would take you well over 12 months. How long did it take you to make this? Uh, it's like seven days of print time, actually. Seven days? Now that it's developed, yeah, seven days, yeah. If you think about 10 years from now, if your company starts yeah. making more and more rockets, what does that mean? Well, our long-term mission was we want to be the first company to 3D print a rocket on Mars. So you're 3D printing rockets to send a 3D printer to Mars to 3D print more rockets? To come back to Earth, yeah. <laughs> 3D printing enables many form factors because of autonomous technology and battery breakthroughs, aircraft volumes and designs are proliferating, while drones can take many shapes. One of these examples is Yang from China, and 3D printing is accelerating innovation thanks to low costs and rapid prototyping. It lowers the weight of the low volume, high complex parts, saving significant costs. So the aerospace industry could be a prime beneficiary. And ARC estimates that the drone hardware revenues will total roughly $100 billion by 2025. 3D printing unlocks the full potential of artificial intelligence and manufacturing. So the convergence of 3D printing and artificial intelligence enables highly optimized designs that are not possible in traditional manufacturing. And there are three examples here, the US Air Force Institute of Technology, HEXR, and the Yamaichi Special Steel. Well, if you look at the US Air Force Institute of Technology, it's a CubeSat bus, and they transitioned 125 parts into only one part which is 50% lighter, 20% stiffer, and six times more reduction in failure locations. The third example of a use case in 3D printing is the aviation industry. The Hamburg district of Finkenwerder is home to an Airbus factory. The head of the company's emerging technologies department is Michael Zillus. His team uses 3D printed prototypes to help improve components. Additive manufacturing definitely has the potential to change the entire value chain. We can do production on site, redesign processes, and print on demand. We can develop completely new products for next generation aircraft. This is where Airbus assembles its A350 passenger jets. A key component is now being printed in quantity, the door locking shaft. They're due to fly in the aircraft later this year. This component usually consists of 10 parts, but the Airbus version has just one. We've integrated several functions and reduced the weight. There are two of these parts per door and they make the aircraft lighter by 4 kilograms. That's a lot in the aviation world. It cuts down on fuel consumption and CO2 emissions. Over the 30-year lifespan of an aircraft, one less kilogram of weight will save half a million litres of fuel. The A350 actually has a lot of 3D printed parts. 16 door lock shafts, 20 brackets for the crew cabin compartments, and more than 1,000 plastic parts in panels, ventilation systems and electronics gear. Airbus is even testing prototypes of electrical parts. 3D printing is typically used to build grid structures like this cabin partition wall. The printed version uses less material and so is lighter than previous models. Airlines are always trying to reduce the weight of their planes to save fuel, but Airbus believes the 3D process could be even more efficient. This is the largest component that we can make right now. 
We'd like to build bigger ones. It took us a total of 900 hours to produce a complete partition wall in seven construction chambers. That means we had to start up a printer seven times to produce the 116 parts we needed. 900 hours of printing time for just one wall. That's a lot of work. In future, the hope is to print a mould and then cast it again and again. Right now, conventional mass production methods can still produce components like this more quickly and cheaply than 3D can. But that could soon change. And lastly, sizing the opportunity for the 3D printing market. Arc believes that the global 3D printing market will scale at a compound annual growth rate of 60% during the next five years from 12 billion US dollars to roughly 120 billion by 2025. And they also put this in a graph called the global estimates for the 3D printing market from 2020 to 2025. And on the X axis, we have the date of estimate, and on the Y axis, we have uh, the market capitalization in US billions of dollars. Ernst and Young argue that uh, by 2023 it's going to be 27 billion. A company called 3D Hubs has an estimation for 2024 of 35 billion and Arc says 120 billion by 2025. And McKinsey is even more optimistic. They argue 180 to 490 billion. So let's invest. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you actually learned something and see you on the next part.